Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so my name is Eric Mayer. I'm going to be talking to you about a, a small project we're doing in in 5G today. Um, so a little bit about me. I um, been working wireless for a few years, probably about 20, uh, 20 ish, and uh, so the last few have been devoted mostly to uh, 5G. And I work for a company called Incutel. Um, so at a high level, Incutel is a, a nonprofit strategic investor. Um, it sources, funds, accelerates uh, tech startup companies. Um, within Incutel, we have uh, a subsidiary called IQT Labs, Incutel Labs. And what Labs does is, uh, you know, we look at open source material, ac re re academic research, um, along with um, some of our startup technology to see how we can demonstrate how we can solve some of our customers' problems. And um, within labs, we have, uh, we have an engineering group, which is which I'm part of, and um, we build stuff. People say, oh, really, you build stuff? Interesting, didn't know that. Um, yeah, we, uh, you know, we write code, we fabricate, we, um, we use uh, you know, startup technology where we can to build prototypes and uh, demonstrate you know, how we can actually um, solve some of our customers' problems you know, with applied research, if you will. Um, and so one of those is what I'm going to be talking to you about today. So this all started one day with a conversation. Um, hey, what would it take to disrupt a, uh, a 5G, an all IP-based 5G network or 4.5G network? Um, uh, what would it take, you know, just to cause problems and then wreak havoc uh, on, on one? And, um, and subsequently, how would we defend it? Um, so we figured, okay, in order... In order to do that, um, well, we have to build a 5G network or 4.5G network. Um, and then we have to figure out what the attack surface looks like. Uh, you know, how, how, how can you attack this thing? And then we have to figure out, okay, well, what's our defense strategy? How are we going to protect this? Um, so that's pretty much what we did. Um, so you can see our Git repo up there. The internal project name is called Deadless. Um, but yeah, you can, you can pull that down. You can see what we did. We have, um, you know, we have all the source code in there. And, how to build it and instructions, readme's on how you can actually implement it. Um, but I want to give a huge uh, shout out to the to the rest of my team, uh, engineering team, Charlie, Ryan, and Josh, who um, did and continue to do most of the heavy lifting. Um, these guys are awesome. So just a little bit of 5G background. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but just so we're on the same page. Um, any cellular network has three main parts, right? So you've got the RAN, the core, and the user equipment. So the RAN, that's the radio access piece where your handset talks to the radio and gets out, you know, gets makes phone calls. Um, then you have the core network that takes data to and from the RAN and routes it and um, you know, manages network resources, authenticates users, does billing, uh, among other things. And then finally, you have the user equipment. These are things that use the network. So handsets, phones, IoT devices, vehicles in some cases. Um, and a couple things that are not on here uh, that we, we hear a lot are uh, network architecture types. So you're going to hear two things called non-standalone, NSA, great acronym, uh, and standalone, SA. Uh, so non-standalone networks uh, generally use existing infrastructure. So you, know, you use what's out there to implement your 5G network. Um, and there's, you know, advantages to doing that. One of them is being costs. You can kind of try before you buy, if you will. But you won't necessarily get all the things that 5G has to offer. Uh, the other type of network is called standalone, and that's building it from the ground up. And obviously, you can take advantage of a lot more things, but it costs a lot more. So, um, so prior to 5G, 4.5G, um, a lot of these cellular networks had uh, a lot of dedicated hardware. Um, and proprietary software running to make them work. And so this landscape has really changed with 5G. You know, and these are some of the things that have changed the landscape. For example, uh, software-defined radio. You know, this is taking or commoditizing radio resources and moving them from dedicated hardware over to software and firmware. Um, internet protocol. You know, every, every use of internet protocol is huge because we're getting away from uh, proprietary protocols that were used before to something that everybody speaks. Um, and there's this thing called control and user plane separation, which will probably be clear later on. But basically what we're doing is we're separating the control and user plane functions and in the, um, implementing them independently, which allows a lot more flexibility for network design. And also in some cases, 
it enables things like uh, low latency, which is one of the things that 5G is promising. Um, and then we have software-defined networking. Again, taking dedicated hardware, moving it more into software, making your network functions a lot more um, easily configurable and maintainable. And then lastly, cloud compute. So you know your old days of where you had racks and racks of dedicated uh, hardware, like in a data center or something, now can be implemented in cloud compute fabric, um, which can do things, host things easily, like multi-tenancy um, and net network slices that, that give you. Uh, you can spin up and down resources really fast and really efficiently. So what's our project all about? Uh, what are we doing here? Um, you know, real, real uh, you know, to, to sum it up, we, we're, we're developing a 5G test infrastructure um, basically as cheaply, easily, and quickly as we can. Because um, we don't have a lot of money, we don't have very much time, you know, we can't go out and buy, you know, buy core, uh, some of the commercial cores out there. So, so we're trying to do this using open source software and COTS hardware. Uh, and we're doing this to explore our different, uh, the effectiveness of our different defense um, options that we want to test out. So for example, if we get something we want to try or we, we have a piece of hardware that we want to test um, or a scenario that we want to run, we can really quickly and easily spin up um, you know, a 5G network and, and test it and, and see, you know, see what the results might be. And so we have some pictures down on the bottom of some of the hardware we're using. Um, you know, off to the right, the very familiar uh, Edis V200 radio. Um, and then next to it, we have some UEs. Uh, those are IoT devices and a handset. Uh, and we're provisioning all our own SIM cards too to work on our network. Um, so each of us, uh, there's four of us, including me uh, on the team. Um, so each of us is running our own core and uh, Enode B and COTS radio. So we call it the D5G stack. Uh, you know, it's essentially an LTE stack. Um, so each is running our own stack. So that picture on the far right are two of our team members. Um, each, so they're having a Teams call on Google Meet. Um, so, and they're each using their own D5G stack. Uh, so the one gentleman is sitting in New Zealand. Uh, one of our team members sits in New Zealand and then the other gentleman is sitting in, uh, on the West Coast. So it's, it's kind of cool. You know, we're using our own network. We're, we're eating our own dog food as it were. Uh, so here's the problem. Um, you know, 5G, 5G core can experience attacks from both the RAN side or the data network side. So this purple box uh, is defining what, what we're looking to, to essentially defend and, and also attack. Um, but you might say, okay, in most cases, uh, the, 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 the network is just like a regular corporate enterprise IT network, right? I mean, why don't you just use techniques to defend that like, like they do uh, in the enterprise world? And I, you know, we say, okay, that, that okay, I get it. But, um, you know, you get this radio thing hanging off the side there. And there's like all kinds of IQ going in and out of it, you know, IQ samples. And we have to look at latency and, you know, there's some maybe com specific protocols that we have to look at. So, so you know, an enter defending an enterprise network isn't really quite like defending a 5G network. So we got to figure out, one of the things that we're trying to do is sort of, go, hey, what are those subtleties that make defenses of a 5G network versus an enterprise network different? So, I mean, that's, that's one of the things we're actually trying to find out. So um, this is just one strategy we came up with. Um, you know, we're not just looking for vulnerabilities and trying to patch them. You know, we said, okay, let's try and act, you know, let's let's look at this holistically uh, from a systems point of view, um, how we could approach it. So what we did, we're running a, a red team, blue team. So red team is the attacker, blue team is the defender, um, and so we we came up with ways you can attack the network on the top. So I'm not going to go through all of them, uh, but for example, you know, grant of access. Um, you know, how can a, a basically attacker can get unauthorized access to a network? Um, you know, destruction and deletion, um, an attacker could get onto your network and destroy data or parts of your network that could um, be very damaging. Um, and then along the defense side, you know, obviously you don't have to do anything. Uh, and then you have firewalling, which is, you know, kind of traditional. There's really not too much, nothing interesting about that. I'm afraid, okay, what are some other ways we could uh, use as defenses for our network? So uh, so one one way was is deception, um, where, you are steering an attacker to parts of your network that have little to no value. So if they do something in your network, it's not really gonna matter too much. 
And then one of my favorites is, um, is throttling. So that's, uh, that's intentionally making the attacker spend a lot of time uh, achieving their objectives. So you could think maybe you know, you're, you're throttling their network connection down to maybe a few bits per second where they still have a connection, but it's just getting so frustrating that maybe they move on to something else. Uh, so, and, and these are all documented on our, on our, um, in our GitHub readme. Um, you know, what did you, we've defined these pretty, pretty well and you can, you can read more about them there. Um, but so we, we picked a scenario, we said, hey, okay, we're gonna do um, attack objective, we're gonna do a grant of access and we're gonna, we're gonna pick deception as our defense response. So what we did was we told the red team, okay, we spun up a network, right? And we told the red team, uh, okay, we want you to access the subscriber database. So that's where all the users are kept, MZs and numbers and all kinds of good stuff. Uh, we want you to get in there and we want, you know, we want you to look for this particular MZ if you can find it. And we want you to do something to it, like add an access point name or a change the bandwidth limits or something just so we know that you, act, you altered it. Um, or if you can't find it, add your own MZ and you know, tell us what it is. Um, and then we also give, uh, you know, we give them, we give the attacker an entry point. So they, an assumed compromise, right? We're not, we're not making them break into the network. We're saying, okay, here's your starting point. Um, you go, go do what you have to do to, um, to get into this database and achieve your objectives. Um, and so we, you know, fire up the network. And then we're not telling them what defense option we're using. So, you know, it could be any one of those six. Uh, so we chose to use deception. And so what we did was, um, we said, okay, we're gonna spin up a bunch of different, we're gonna spin up a bunch of dummy databases, subscriber databases. So uh, when he gets in there, um, you know, it'll be a shell game. Uh, he might not necessarily know it, or you know, the, the attacker might not know it, but um, there'll be a one in N chance that he'll, uh, that the attacker will, will get the right database. Um, and so we did that, we ran that, um, you know, he got in, so we're, the, the, the core we're using actually uses a, a MongoDB database. So there's, there's loads of you know, open source exploits for that. Um, so got in, did that, um, and it turned out, yeah, he, he, he got a database, but he didn't get the right one. Um, and he didn't know we we're using deception. So he's like, well, if I knew we're using deception, I would have just done them all. And we only, I think we only swam about six or something for this exercise. Um, so, you know, we're using Dockers. So in theory, we could spin up hundreds or maybe thousands if we had the resources. Um, so, you know, changing all of them would not necessarily be, be an option. But anyway, we learned a lot from that scenario. Um, and, you know, what we're going to do next is we, we're going to do more of these. But it, it was a really good, um, it was a really good way to, to study how, you know, other ways we could defend the network. So this is what we started with. This is the, the network that we started with. It's really simple. Um, we're using open source uh, Evolve Packet Core, open source eNodeB, uh, COTS Radio. There's a little picture of it down there on the left-hand side. I think, again, I'm using an Edis B200. Um, all the stuff in the red box is running on the laptop. Uh, we are using Docker containers. So um, I have been asked, what is a Docker container? Uh, so if you don't know, uh, it, real, real simply, it's a very lightweight VM. Uh, so it has everything you need to run applications in it. So we're spinning all these things up in uh, various Docker containers. Um, so we're using this really to figure out how we're gonna containerize things and how we're going to orchestrate and manage services uh, among, among other things and you know, how we would maybe approach network slicing. So here's, here's a little detail under the hood um, from one of our network slices. So um, you can see there's a lot of, a lot of different uh, IP addresses there that we have to configure and manage, um, even for one slice. Um, but uh, so we have some open source tools that we use to do this. Um, so, you know, in Docker's, I don't know, you know, Docker has its own way of doing networks and, um, you know, you kind of sort of have to know what you're doing, uh, which I don't. Um, so we have some tools out there that uh, were written by guys. They're actually maintained by two of our team members. Uh, one's called DoveSnap. Um, so DoveSnap is essentially a Docker network provider that handles all the configuration of, of your Docker network. So you you know it's basically a command line, um, and so you, you can specify all the you know all the parameters that you need, and it just makes it happen. It's it's beautiful. Um, there's another tool called Faucet, um, well, again also maintained by uh, one of our team members, and um, Faucet is more, so Faucet really, it takes the virtual and physical networks and it merges them. Um, again, you're talking SDN stuff, I'm not an SDN guy, but 
Um, you know, Faucet works with Open Virtual Switch and Open Flow, <clears throat> and it just it takes all that and it just makes it happen. I mean, it's it's amazing. I, it's magic to me, um, and it really it helps us make our networking more consistent. So when we spin spin these things up and take them down, you know, we know they're gonna we know that we know they're gonna config, be configured the same way every time. So uh, it's really a big help. And you know, this is one example, but when you have several of these, it really does make a difference. So this is our current network, more or less, what we have going today. Um, so as you can see, we've, we've kind of broken out the different network functions. Um, so the colored boxes here indicate how we've, uh, how we've broken them out. And we're running them in different containers. Um, but so for example, all the radio functions are in the green, user plane functions are all in the red, and our control plane functions are in blue. So, uh, so we're running, you know, so here's what we're running here. You know, we, we, we're using Open5GS. Again, it's an open source core, um, EPC. We're using uh, SRS RAN as our uh, soft modem. And then we're, you know, we're, we're using, working with a, a couple of different radios. Uh, New and Blade RX, uh, XA9s and XA4s, um, Edis B200s and B210s, and then Lime, uh, Lime Microsystems, uh, Lime USB um, radio. And then some of the UEs on the on the far right there, uh, you know, a bunch of Samsung handphones, uh, handsets, and then two IoT devices, six fab and Blue's wireless. Um, kind of haven't really got Blue's wireless fully working yet, but we're getting close. Um, so uh, the E node B is for RF. Our G node B, we're not using RF yet. Um, we just can't. We haven't been able to get the new radio soft modem working with any of our COTS radios. So. What we're using is uh, a thing called UE RANSIM. And what that does is it simulates the radio uh, layer through, radio link through an L2 layer. So it's basically just a network connection, um, which for what we're doing now is, it's good enough, uh, but we, we really want to get to a, a real RF uh, link there. Um, and so yeah, we do have some of, some of, some 5G core functions are working, not all of them. Um, you know, we're still working on it, figuring out on how we're going to implement some of them. Um, but we also have, uh, and you, you can see this in the in the README. We also have a um, a command line tool that, essentially, uh, a Python tool that you you run it and it sets everything up for you. It asks you some questions and then um, it'll set up and con con configure your your network for you. You don't have to worry about scripts and you don't have to worry about parameters. Um, it just makes things so much easier. When we started, we we didn't have that, so. It's been a big help in, in allowing us to get networks um, spun up really fast. So just to leave you with a few thoughts here, um, you know, open source software, open source software has really enabled this project. Uh, we couldn't have done it without it. So, um, you know, SRS ran, Open 5GS, Next TPC, um, all of these, all of these things. I mean, they've been really fantastic, and and they, I mean, they work pretty well for what we want to do. So um, I mean I'm just I'm hopeful that the um, that community and ecosystem will continue to flourish because uh, it's it's really uh, I think jump started this project. Um, another thing, private networks private networks have been kind of an inspiration for us, um, and private networks are becoming more you know they're becoming more uh, prevalent and more attractive because of uh, you know it, they they can uh, you can implement them at, uh, more cost effectively. Um, they also, they allow you greater control over your network. Um, and this is especially true for IoT devices and companies that want to um, manage their own IoT uh, networks. And then lastly, if, it, if it's not obvious, um, security. So, you know, security needs to be holistically part of your system design from the beginning. You know, too many times security is, it's an afterthought, right? It's bolt-on, it's, um, you know, not, not well-defined and, you know, left up to the operator to figure out. So, you know, one of the things we're looking at here is how can we make security, you know, how can we think about this holistically um, uh, for, our, for our network before we deploy it? So, um, I think that's everything. So yeah, uh, here's my contact info. Um, we're just getting started, so we'd love to hear from you. You know, if you have use cases or, you know, you've got uh, want to collaborate or have ideas, um, please do give us a shout. Um, Again, there's the repo, and um, oh yeah, so our labs, we have a bunch, we do a lot of cool projects in labs. I mean, people don't know this because you know, the Dinky Tell does this, but 
Um, we got a lot of projects, so you can check out check out the GitHub on uh, on the bottom. Um, you know, there's a lot of cool stuff there. So um, so thank you very much. Can I take any questions? So um, I was going to ask if your test bed is uh, an NSA or SA. It looks like it's a little bit of a mix of both. Yeah. But uh, I guess, and you, I think you spoke a little bit about this, but like what prevents you from having a full SA? Like is it just a matter of tooling that doesn't exist or just getting things that you already have working? Well, I mean, by definition, we don't have a G node B, right? So we, I mean, we, we have a, we don't have an RF G node B. I mean, it's, it probably looks more like a non standalone. Um, and we don't have all of the 5G core functions up and running. We have some of them. I, it might've been not clear. I know it probably wasn't too clear from the diagram, um, but we only have a, a handful of the 5G core functions up and running. So technically it's not really a standalone, but that, that's what we want to get to is a, you know, a full standalone or at least have that as an option. Um, any other questions? Anyone else? No. All right. Thank you so much, Eric. Yep.